Hi, welcome. I'm Susanna. And in today's rather unique session, we will be doing a medley of the Strong Bones Challenge Facebook group monthly challenges, all the exercises that we've done together as a group uh, in one session. This is not exactly a yoga session, but because I do yoga, this will have yoga elements to it. But what it totally is, is an opportunity to strengthen your bone density and improve your balance and your posture. So if you are not yet a member of our Strong Bones Challenge Facebook group, you could join by going below this uh, video, you'll find a link and you may request uh, to join our amazing support group. We would love to have you. Also, uh, this is my YouTube channel, Forever Yoga with Susanna, and I have many videos that are safe uh, and appropriate if you have low bone density or osteoporosis. Please subscribe the ch to the channel if you haven't yet. And everyone, before we get started on today's session, give it a thumbs up, a like. Okay, so that said, get yourself set up. You'll need a yoga mat, um, a chair or a couch, possibly a wall or your kitchen counter. We'll make this work for everybody, and I'll see you back in just a moment. Welcome back. So let's begin today's session at the beginning, the very first challenge that the Facebook group did as a collective challenge um, with each other, it was heel bounces. So heel bounces are done with your feet about hip width apart, give or take. It should feel very stable when you're standing on two feet. Your feet are more or less parallel and you could have bare feet, you could have shoes on. You could do this out and about while you're waiting for the light to change or if you're standing on a line in a store or you can do them in your kitchen if you're waiting for your kettle to boil. And of course, you can do them on your yoga mat. So let's get 10 in together right now. Take a breath in through your nose, lift up on your tippy toes and come down with a bounce. Let's do this. Inhale and 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, and then come up for one more to hold. Make a balancing challenge out of this to strengthen your feet. Find your focus, work your balance. Hold, 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 and then down with a final bounce. Great, step that out. Heel bounces. All right, next up, we have a little foot love for you. I'm gonna sit down to demo this. You can do foot love standing. You can do foot love lying in your bed, which I do most mornings before I even uh, step out of my bed. So foot love is very simple. Lift one foot, one leg up, and then with your foot, you will write the word love, L-O-V-E, capital L, O, V, lowercase e, uh, and that's it. Let's do that. L, O, V, E, L, O, V, E. So what I did was I switched uh, direction. Um, I, I wrote L, love one way and then I wrote it backwards like a mirror image so that all the muscles of your feet work in all different directions. Okay, other leg, lift it up. So it's L, O, V, E, and now the other direction. L, O, V, E. And if you don't get it exactly right, it doesn't matter as long as you're moving your feet around in all kinds of different directions and giving them some love. That's foot love. Next up, let's work on posture. So you can go to the featured section of the Facebook group and find the videos where I demonstrate what we did that month using a doorway uh, to open up the chest, you make your arms like a cactus and press the sides of the door and push your chest forward. That creates so much resistance. It's a really great exercise. Since I'm not going to do that here, I have no door, honestly, <laughs> in this space. So we will do it just like this. So 
let's first ramp the head back. So take two fingers, push your head back. So not jutted forward, but ramped back. That's the first step. Next, bring your arms in front of you. Take a breath as you reach high and then draw out into cactus. You can energize your hands, spread them, pull your shoulder blades together. So this is cactus pose, standing tall. And now let's open and close the arms. So inhale and exhale as you touch and open, open and close. Beautiful. And then some of you remember we did snow angels at the wall, which was kind of challenging. <laughs> um, this version we'll do right here. So bring the arms up and like angel wings, bring them down and draw tightly your elbow into your rib cage. Pull in and then up again. So it's a big squeeze, a lot of work going on. And I like to alternate my wrists crossing above the head. Okay, let's do four more. Great. And release. Relax. Roll your shoulders. Bring your arms around and behind you. Interlace your fingers. If that's really uh, hard to straighten your arms, you could grab a strap of some sort or a sock and hold on to it and do it that way. If you can interlace your fingers, cool. Try to straighten your arms as best you can. And then again, this is a, sh a chest opener move. Let's turn it into a back bend. Root down in two feet, send your hips forward, send your chest forward, and then lift your sternum. Look up to where the ceiling meets the wall and pull the arms back behind you and breathe. and release. Let it go. Let's move on to some balancing challenges. Starting with tree pose. Come to your feet once again about hip width apart, approximately parallel. You want to look at your feet. This is a good opportunity to look down at your feet, lift your toes, spread them. As much foot love as you can give them is always a good thing. Good and then press your feet back down, press your feet into the earth. So you want to start tree pose always in that Tadasan pose, mountain pose. And then once you feel grounded and centered in mountain, shift your weight into one leg. So let's say it's your right leg. So come into your right leg, root down, lighten up on the left. You can now rotate the left hip out to the side, bring your left heel into the side of your ankle of your right ankle and pause. This is shrub pose. It's a balancing tree variation and I invite you to try this posture with me now. If balance is a super duper challenge for you, um, we're going to move on, make this more challenging. You're more than welcome to hold on to the side of a chair, your kitchen counter or a wall. Okay, because I don't want you to fall over. You got to work this progressively. Okay, next thing from here is to draw the foot up the side of your leg and see how that feels. So this is going to require your hips to really work. And then you'll find a spot you're going to hold it, but you're not going to press. You're just going to lightly touch the side of your leg wherever you get to is fine. And then hold, focus your gaze, maybe start to work your arms for uh, extending up your branches, your tree branches. You're always focusing and breathing and releasing. Rotate your knee forward and bring two feet back to the earth. There is, of course, the variation where you can bring the foot all the way up into your inner thigh. I will not demonstrate that, but you are more than welcome to do it. Okay, root down in two feet once again to prepare to do the other side. Get grounded, lighten up, rotate, shrub. So take your time in this balancing position. Find your breath, find your focus. And perhaps you'll work 
the leg up the side, the foot up the side of your leg, and hold there. I'm certain that most of us find one side a little more challenging than the other. Extend your arms into some variation that looks like today's tree. Focus, breathe, and now to release, hands on hips, knee comes forward, two feet to the earth, and you'll step that out. Excellent. While we're here, I'm going to interject another bouncing exercise <laughs> that is not yet a challenge, but I feel a future monthly Strong Bones Challenge coming on. And this, my friends, is called, yes, the Leonardo. <laughs> so this is a moving, balancing exercise where you put your weight on one foot, lean to that direction, <laughs> but don't fall over, and then the other side. So we're going to take it, don't go too far, don't do what I just did. Just go side to side. Allow a moment to balance holding it so your brain can figure this out. How does uh, my brain tell my body to adjust so that I don't fall over? That's what this is about. Teaching your brain to adjust to new positions. It's interesting how one side feels different than the other side. You can tell from my demonstration uh, that things go differently over here than over here. <laughs> and that is what it's all about. Okay, so go side to side, enjoy, <laughs> and then release and step it out. Cool, so that is the Leonardo. Moving on to our next exercise, luckily we get to take a seat. So find yourself a chair or a couch, whatever, and this is called sit to stands. It's very simple, but you want to do it right. So you, you have to have your feet grounded and then your spine long, shoulders relaxed, ramp your head back, you've got great posture. So. You know, in our lives, we go from seated to standing all the time, but we want to train ourselves to do it in an optimally safe and uh, strengthening way. So let's do 10 together. We're going to take a breath in, and as you lift up, you'll squeeze your glutes on the top. There it is. And that was one, two, three. Four, and you could have your arms in I dream of genie, <laughs> or you could have them in prayer. It doesn't matter really. You can even keep them beside you. So I like them in prayer. Okay, I lost count. So that would be, let's do three more. Three, two, and squeeze. Last time. There we go. Sit to stands. Do that every day for the rest of your life. More challenging and just as important is to practice getting from seated on the floor to standing. So come on down and from your mat, your, your goal is to try to come all the way up to standing without using your hands. And I will say, if you do need to use your hands a little bit, do that because that you may need a little help. Sometimes um, your uh, knees uh, require a little extra support. So whatever works for you, but we're going to go from seated to standing. And here it is. Swivel your legs around. And then without, if possible, using your hands, come up onto your knees. And once you're on your knees, curl your back one toe, curl the toes of one foot, and the other foot will come forward. And now you're in a low lunge. From here, you'll use your breath and, the, and momentum and the strength of your legs to come up and you're standing. Ta-da! Now take it backwards. So that same leg that came forward, take it back, drop that knee, two knees down, and then come to your seat and you're back where you started. 
Let's do it again and we will lead with the other leg this time. So if you can swivel your legs the other direction to come up, do that. Um, if not, you can stick with the same direction. Come to your knees and now it's the other leg will come forward and the curled toes are behind you. Be in the low lunge for a moment, get grounded and rooted, and then use your breath to lift you up. And you are standing. Great, so that's sit to stands challenge. Okay, we get to go down now and do some upper body work. So transition please to the mat. Preparing to plank. <laughs> Let's start uh, in preparation for plank pose in table position. You're going to bring your hands and wrists underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. And this is known as table position. And what I'd like for you to do as a warm up is to drop your chest between your arms, literally sink your chest forward. So you're going to feel the shoulder blades lift as you do that. And then push away, push, push, push as you make your arms strong and straight and feel your upper body pushing towards the sky. So you're not rounding, but you're pushing. So you, you'll drop and lift, drop and lift. Excellent. So that's the upper body warm up and the lower body warm up will be um, lifting one leg up and then do a hip car. Bring your knee to one side up and down and then up side and in. So this is a hip circle and hips. We don't want to forget our hips. Good. And then do the other side. Lift your leg up 90 degrees, go to the side and down. I can move over, I hit my couch. So it's going to go over, down, up, and again. So isolating all the other body parts and just moving the hip joint. Very important. Good. And now extended child's pose is a stretch for the spine. Bring your arms in front of you and take your hips back as you, keeping your spine straight, stretch, 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 all the way from your hands back to your hips. And see if you can tune into breath here. Notice my butt is not all the way back on my heels. You can do this in a way that feels good for you. Great, okay, plank. Hands are underneath shoulders. Take one leg behind you and then the other and then lift yourself up. So there you are, my friends. If this is too much for your lower back, for real, you'll drop to your knees and do a knee down plank. If you're there, you really want to push away though so you can work the arms. Lifting and holding. So crown to tailbone to heels. And then here is the secret to a really effective plank. Pull your hands towards your toes and your toes to your hands. So you're isometrically drawing yourself towards yourself to energize the whole thing, your whole body. Pull, 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 pull in, pull in, pull in. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Excellent, we're gonna hold for about five more seconds. Five, pull, energize, and three, two, one. Knees drop, stretch back. Beautiful. So, challenging, yes. Maybe you can just do it for a few seconds. Maybe you're working on holding your planks for a minute or more. Now there's another, there are many other ways to do these exercises. And another way to do plank is on your forearms. And I like the variation called dolphin. It's sort of a yoga way to do it. In dolphin, we make a triangle with our arms. So interlace your fingers, have a tripod with your arms and press your elbows down and check that it's uh, very uh, symmetrical and root down in your arm bones, your fists and pull your shoulders away. And then just like the other plank, extend one leg, then the other leg. And here you want to 
kind of check in with where your hips are. Hopefully not lower there. That if they're too low, it's not good for your back. If it's too high, you're doing a different pose. So you want to be in plank, straight as, more or less as straight as you can. So root down, find your breath, and hold. Let's hold this for 10 seconds. 10, 9, push, push, push. Breathe, breathe, breathe. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Remember releasing. You take your time. You drop your knees. And you find that counter stretch that feels really good to you. Good. Planks. OK. Now, while we're here, we might as well jump in and do some push-ups because <laughs> as I film this, it is the push-up challenge month, hashtag push-ups for bones. And there are many variations on push-ups. You can do push-ups at the wall. You can do push-ups on a counter. You might have a push-up practice where you're going from plank. I'm in the knees, tricep style push-up uh, phase myself right now. So if you'd like to join me, let's do 10 knee down push-ups. So come back to your hands. To effectively work your triceps, you can keep your elbows as close into your body as possible, and you can stay on your knees. Cross at your ankles if you want to, and pull your abdominals in to support your spine. Lower down any amount for 10. Let's do this. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and last time, press away. Push, 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 and stretch. Great. And then after we've done all that work for push-ups, let's give ourselves a little bit of wrist love. Extend one arm and pull that hand back to stretch out your wrists and your hands and your fingers. Other side, pull back, pull, pull, pull. Push, push, and try to straighten your arm as best as you can, even if you have a broken elbow. Try to make it straighter. Good, and shake that out. And let's do another wrist love movement, shaking out your wrists and moving your fingers. Go ahead and bring the backs of your hands to touch. And then draw the hands up the center line of your body and then circle around, keeping the heel of your hands touching. And do these rotations for wrist and hand mobility. Good. And re reverse this. Go the other way. Good. And again, movements for your hands. You could squeeze and open, squeeze and open. Very, very good stuff. Okay. Now we are getting down to the end of our challenges. Next up, though, is one of my favorites, upward facing boat. So come to your seat, your sitting bones. And first thing to ensure is a straight back. So you want to uh, place your hands behind your thighs. Have your feet be light on the mat. And you might do a little lift here, like push your chest forward and lean back. Remember, we don't want to round. So if you find that you're rounding, you may need to uh, do some modifications. For example, you could bring your hands behind you and then push down to send your chest forward. This is a great exercise in and of itself. Even if you don't do the full boat, you could do this one and then lift your legs up one at a time. Great for core strength. Good. And posture. All right, but let's do a boat. So from here, take a breath. Go ahead, lift your feet up off the floor and allow your legs to find where they're comfortable. Maybe bent 90 degrees. Extend your arms. And here it is, the bent knee boat. 
Hold this for as long as you like. You might try straightening your legs to see if you want to do a full, full version. My legs tend to cramp up now when I do that, so we'll, we'll leave that for whoever. <laughs> this is fine. Hold your boat. Breathe, breathe, breathe. And cross at your ankles to sit up. Great. And now, because a bridge a day keeps bone loss at bay, we'll move on to bridge pose. So come onto your back. Always moving carefully to lower. And once you're down, take a moment. Take a moment to just connect with your mind in your spine. And maybe move your head ever so slowly side to side. Good, and then bring your head to center. And then a couple of pelvic tilts. So squeeze your butt, lift your tailbone off the floor, and then reverse, arching your back slightly. You could even put your hand under there at that point. So press your lower back in, and then reverse. So this is great preparation for our bridge pose. Good. And then why not bring one leg in, and give your hip a little stretch, and then the other will press. Good. And let's do bridge. Feet can come anywhere you want to plant them, seriously. Because I like to do bridge in different variations on different days, because that will work the muscles and uh, give a different sort of load to your hip bones. You do not need to do it exactly the same way every time. So find the place you're going to do it today. Maybe, maybe your heels are underneath your knees, but maybe, like me today, you walk your feet a little bit forward. Not too far. Root down in your feet, root down in your upper arm bones, and now lift your hips up off the floor and keep going until you have essentially a straight line from your knees to your hips to your shoulders and then hold. While you're holding, what's great to do is engage your inner thighs as if you were squeezing, for example, an imaginary beach ball. And another great thing to do is to think of breathing into the muscles that are pushing up into your rib cage, into your spine. And you can also do the variation if you want where your hands are underneath you. It gives you a little more leverage. Feels kind of good. And the secret to our challenge, of course, is to hold it for a long time, as long as you like, because the longer you hold, the more your bones are going to feel the stimulus of the muscles working. Please find easy breathing. Relax the muscles of your face and your jaw. Push down, lift up, engage your glutes, engage your inner thighs. You might even lift your toes, which engages the feet. And notice what happens when you do that. Everything moves up the chain to give a little bit more uh, liveliness, shall we say. Relax the toes. When you're ready to let it go, if your arms are underneath, take them out and then come down slowly. Release to the mat. And then a counter pose is almost always uh, called for. So do what you like. One option would be to take the feet side to side gently in a easy windshield wiper twist. It's a gentle release of the lower back. It's not a deep twist. Another th thing many folks like to do after bridge is to go legs up the wall, or not the wall, but the invisible wall. Just extend your legs straight up. Place your hands underneath the edge of your butt, palms face down. That gives your lumbar spine a little bit of a support and hold here. This is a safe inversion. Great. And then you might release from that and gently hug the knees in. Okay, so I think I hit all of our challenges. Carefully come up to sitting. I'm going to check my list. <gasps> did I do push-ups? Yes. <laughs> I did the push-ups. 
Uh, there was one challenge I didn't do, wasn't even on the list. It's the hashtag step it up or hashtag stare challenge. So one month, just not that many months ago, we walked up and down as many stairs as we could challenge ourselves to uh, every day. So after you're done with today's session, you might go find a flight of stairs, do uh, several flights and really get a complete strong bones workout. Thank you so much for joining me in this challenge today. If you are already a member of our group and I know who you are, please go below the video and leave a comment and say hi. Tell me that you, what you thought of this doing all the challenges at one go. Um, and if you're not yet a member of our group, you can go below, find the link and request to join the Facebook group the Strong Bones Challenge. So that's it. Thanks so much. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you're new to my channel, and I would love to see you next time at Forever Yoga with Susanna, Osteoporosis Safe Yoga. Namaste.